There's this idea that gaming results in violent tendencies. And I agree, because who doesn't want to lovingly kill their fellow players after losing a match against them? Before I tell you why it's perfectly normal to like it when these lucky dogs eventually fail, if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit subscribe and feel free to leave me a comment because I always appreciate feedback. Mario is patron to all kinds of different events from football to golf to tennis. But the party and card game series are by far the best example for what I'm talking about today. Schadenfreude. As you might have guessed already, yes, it's a German word, but it's used all over the world because it's just so fitting for the feeling it describes. Depending on the context, Schaden can mean damage, loss or harm, while Freude is best translated to joy. So basically the joy of seeing other people suffer. What might sound like a horrible emotion is actually a totally natural feeling and I bet most of you experienced it already, especially if you grew up with siblings. I love my brother and sister, but that doesn't mean that I don't feel freaking fantastic whenever I manage to hit them with the blue spiny shell in Mario Kart, which is basically the embodiment of Schadenfreude. It follows whoever is in the lead until it's close enough to explode, blasting the driver towards the sky and often ruining any hope this person could have ever had of winning the race. Sparking Schadenfreude is simply good game design. You don't believe me? Well, would you trust the people behind the newest installment of the Mario Kart series? Let's look at the items of 8 Deluxe. When you pick up a supply box during a race, you get one of these 22 options. Only four of them are exclusively affecting the user in a positive way. Six are a combination of good for you and bad for the rest. And all the others are purely meant to derail your competition. That is no coincidence. Gloating has a poor reputation. A well-mannered human being shouldn't ever enjoy the pain of others, right? Wrong. In our society exists a hierarchy, a pecking order, in which we all constantly have to prove our worth. Where you stand on this ladder is largely defined by comparing yourself with others. Every time you have the feeling that someone earned their higher position wrongfully, your subconscious sees it as a threat to your social standing. Any event that knocks this person down from their podium results in high activity in your brain's reward center. You're happy because to you it was an act of justice. If you're looking for demonstrative material for this phenomenon, look no further than the Mario Party games. Here you compete in virtual turn-based board games. Whoever earned the most stars by the end of a match wins. The games do an at times annoyingly thorough job of reminding you constantly who's in the lead. There are also no secrets. You can always check each other's movement options and all items are openly distributed. So you always know whom you should focus your evil intentions on. The newer installments in the series have gone a bit soft, pushing cooperation over competition. But in older games, you were able to steal stars or challenge others to a duel. Let's say the decision to play a round of Mario Party often led to living room warfare and of course a ton of schadenfreude. Obviously, not every case of bad luck is a reason for amusement. The feeling of, haha, they deserve that, only gets triggered when your brain can justify the misfortune. This was, for example, confirmed through a study by psychologists Shlomo Hareli and Bernard Weiner. Students were asked to imagine a situation where a fellow student was unfairly favored and to describe their feelings if this person would now fail an exam. The most common answer? Schadenfreude. If the person would, however, have to face suspension, the students felt pity rather than any kind of glee. Although the latter answer changed when the envied student was described as a real sleazeball. Some experts, among them supposedly even the famous Sigmund Freud, go to such length as to describe Schadenfreude as the primal reason for laughter. And there apparently is some truth to that. If you look at all the fail compilations online with thousands or even millions of views. April Fool's Day is yet another example how humanity celebrates the relatively harmless suffering of others. And why should games be an exception? 
their prime job is to entertain after all. As long as throwing exploding turtle shells at others stays in the virtual world, there really is no harm in indulging in one's malicious joy. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope your day is as good as gold. See you next time.